Hey guys, I am at my favorite local thrift store and I just scored a whole cart full of wonderful silk flowers and I cannot wait to get home and show you a new technique I'm working on to alter the colors of the silk flowers. So I'm back from the thrift store and I have my watercolor set up. Yep, we're using watercolors, just regular watercolors, nothing fancy. You don't need to go out and buy the tubes of watercolor, just a little kit. I have this kit from Koi that I really like. Um, it's not a student set, but it's not like a fine artist set either. It's kind of in between and it works just great. And it's working great for this. So let's get to it. Let's start with these poinsettias, these cheap poinsettias that you can pick up everywhere, although they didn't have any at the dollar store. That's why I was at the thrift store. And luckily I did have them. Um, and we will perfect our technique on these before we advance to other flowers. So let's get to it. All you do if you haven't dissected um, faux flowers before, you just simply pull, pull this off. Most of them work. Sometimes you might have to clip them if there's two on the same one. And then there's always this little base. It's the little plastic base. You pull that off. And then there's the stamen or the center section here. And you pull that out. Hang on to those because you're going to need those to put them back together. And here, this poinsettia just had two layers to it. Okay, when you're watercoloring, you need two cups of water. One that you just keep clean and one that you wash, you stir the brushes that you use in. And over with the clean water, I have two brushes that help me just get my petals wet. And this is when I want to the color to spread, I'm going to get them nice and wet. Now these already had the faint green in the center of the, of the small petal, but not the larger petal. And I think for this, I want to try and maybe um, accentuate that green, but not have it be that yellowy green. I think I want to have it be a little bit deeper. So I have mixed up some of this color here and brought it over onto my palette. And then I have also brought this color over. And just a tip, when you are using um, watercolors, if you haven't used your set of watercolors, I would suggest making a sample of these um, out on some paper because the color looks very different than what you think it's going to look like. So then with my smallest of my paint paint brushes, the ones that are filled with color, I can just dab at the paint on the palette and put it there in the water and let it spread. Now that got a little bit dry, so I can always just spritz on a little bit more. And if you can see, very slowly it is spreading out a little bit. Now I can also thin this color out in my palette and I can drag more of it down if I want to really give it more emphasis here. Changing that color over to a little bit more of a fall shaded one. I'm just kind of ignoring the fact that these are poinsettias at this moment. I'm just playing with color. And then I would not normally combine these colors together, but let's just see what it looks like to add the more blue-green in here too and get some fun accents going because after all that's what nature does, right? Sometimes, sometimes nature combines colors that we would never think to put together and yet it looks wonderful. So let's do that. And then I often like to, because oftentimes I notice that some of my favorite flowers, they have a different shade in the inner core, but then their tips are also something really different. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to add some of this onto the tips and see how I just barely touch it and where it's wet, it just pulls it on up and it will spread it out and it will dry a little bit more significant than it is. And it thins as it goes up. I am not 
into really strong colors. Um, I like my colors on the softer side in things like flowers and all. So this is what I've got going on right here. And I'm kind of liking the feel of that. Adding a little bit more of it down this lip, the center leaf here. Sometimes the smaller leaves have more intense color that fades as they grow up bigger. Um, I guess that color is dispersed throughout a larger leaf and so there isn't as strong of a color. Um, that's not always true, but I've seen it with some and I think that's kind of cool. And so now I've got the very diluted, I've added enough water over here. This is really a diluted version of that first color. And I think that's kind of cool. And that one has a lot more color to it. And I can add a little bit of water to spread that out if I thought that was too much, just like that. We'll do that again so you can see maybe. Do this over here. And then I'm gonna flood it with a little bit more water to spread that out and to make it a little bit more um, transition, a little bit softer of a transition. And we don't want one leaf without any, so we'll give him a little bit. But I'm not trying to make my leaves all the same. Um, that again is not how nature is. And I think I want to call that good. Got a little bit of this up here. This up the statement. I almost put that in my clean water. There we go. Okay, now let's make a bigger one to go with that. Now let's do the larger layer that is all white and only use the deeper, more blue-green. I'm starting by getting all of the petals good and wet. Now on the first petal, let's just see how it spreads over the whole petal, but trying not to have it be super consistent. I'm loading my brush with a fairly diluted version of the paint and just spreading it around just hitting high points. Now this time on the second leaf, I'm going to concentrate more on pulling from the center rib outwards. And yeah, I'm kind of liking that look. You'll notice that the most expensive and realistic faux flowers out there, the colorations vary across a single petal and they follow either like the stem or the tip or the core, um, that's where it is. It's not just even random placement most of the time. Um, so that's what I'm going for here. This third petal, I'm actually going much bolder and you know, I, I kind of like it. It's looking really cool. Um, I tend to be a little bit more timid with my colors on projects like this where I'm going for reality. Um, but I'm thinking that looks really nice. And as it dries, um, we'll see what it does. But let's continue that little bit bolder, putting a bolder streak down the center rib. I think earlier I said stem, down that, that center spine or rib, and then spreading it um, out from there, letting it feather out from there. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And on this one, let's see if it makes a difference doing a spotted puddle line. And it doesn't seem to make much difference. But I'm adding water on the brush there to try and pull that paint out of those little puddles. And actually, it's looking okay. I like that each of the petals is turning out a little bit different because again, that's nature. So let's put our two layers together and see how they look. Yeah, I'm really liking it, but I do think now I want a little bit more color on the small ones on top. 
So let's just go back and add a little bit more to that. That's the beauty of watercolors. Along with keeping my extra cup of clean water, I also have a misting bottle next to me. That's different than a spray bottle. A misting bottle is a much finer mist of water and I use it in all my different kinds of painting, but particularly watercolor, it's very helpful. Um, I can just grab that and do a little spritz on it. Didn't these turn out great? I'm so excited. You can see how much the colors fade as it dries. It doesn't look as intense. So let's do another quick one with just blue this time. Um, several shades of blue, thinking that I'm going to try and use a navy to cover the yellow spot in the center. And we'll see how this turns out. I mixed several shades of blue in the palette, just like I did last time with the other colors of green. And I wet the leaves just as I did last time. And now I'm just bringing it over. It's a paler shade of blue. There, and it it's a spritz to try and get that to spread a little bit more. And then here on the light blue background, I am adding some of the deeper blue to accent the veining of the leaf. And then I did exactly the same method on the smaller top layer of, of petals. And I just concentrated on getting the color a little bit deeper because that entire center section is going to be deeper colored. So I just added a little bit extra intensity. Um, the paint that I picked up off the palette was not as diluted. Um, so it was still the same color, it was just more saturated. Once the petals were all done, then it was time to move to that center section. I'm not sure botanically what that's called, um, but anyway, I pulled up a really deep blue and brought it on there and then spread it out, encouraged it with the paintbrush and I added a little extra water if I needed to, to get it to run up the leaves a little bit or up each petal a little bit. And that's really all there was to it. And now it's just a matter of letting them dry and then I put them back together and look how good they turned out. Now let's take what we learned from doing the leaf, the flower petals and see if we can apply it towards leaves, which was really the original intent of my project here was to get ready for some fall decorating. And I needed some leaves that I wanted to be neutral, but didn't want them to be quite as bland as what you see here. Um, I liked the shape of these leaves, I liked the size of them, but they are just too monotone. I think they need to have a little bit more life come into them without being the really, really bright golds and reds and yellows that um, seem to proliferate the um, faux flower inventory out there. Um, it wouldn't even have bothered me if there were some lighter ones in there, but every leaf, rig of leaves, were all the same exact color. So I want to break that up a little bit because I'm going to use them in mass and I need there to be a little bit more variety than that. So I'm mixing some paints. I'm mixing watercolors in the reds and gold families. Um, I have to have a little bit of orange to it rather than gold because the gold is just going to not do anything on that base color that we're working with on the, the fabric color that already comes. Um, so I'm mixing some up on my palette, and then we'll skip ahead to where we get started. Okay, so here I'm going to, I'm just going to mist the edges. Okay, I'm, I just misted these right now to um, just get it damp so I could see how this is going to behave. So I'm going to do fire along the edge. Do you see that right there? That is kind of wet. So we're gonna go right along that edge. I'm just touching my paint to that edge and seeing how far it will spread on its own with just the misting. Oh, 
Isn't that cool? Isn't that cool? So I'm gonna do right along these edges. And I'm gonna mist this a little bit. If I want another color, say more orangey color to blend in with these. I would want to do that while it's still wet. Then the colors blend in beautifully. If you want another color, when you're using watercolors and you want another color to be next to it, but not to blend together, then you have to wait for this one to dry. And then what you typically do when you're on paper, you would put water next to next to the dried one, clear water, paint it on the paper up next to it, add a little bit of paint, and it will go up to the edge of where that water is. It won't bleed into the other ones. It's, it's really cool how that works. So the reason I'm doing this is because I went to three different stores looking for some neutral leaves for a project that I'm sharing next week. I'm very excited about. And I wanted neutral, but all I could find were these that I liked. Everything was either, there was some white ones, um, but I didn't care for the shape and the quality of them. And then there were the really brightly colored ones, which I didn't really want. So this time, and I switched over to a little bit more of, a, of a, the orangey red here, just to see if it makes any difference. Isn't that cool? Oh my gosh, it looks so good. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited. That looks really good. And that's dry there, I can see. There we go. So you can add the water after, before the paint dries. And this has a little bit of the brown veining already in it. So I'm kind of thinking that's pretty good. But maybe we'll see what just a little bit of this orangey does. Does it really brighten it much? It does kind of add something, doesn't it? right down there, down the center. I do kind of like that. Mm. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. This is what I had in mind that I couldn't find at the store. Um, I guess there was, there was one that I really liked but it was going to cost me way too much money because they were very expensive. Um, the hand-painted leaves are expensive. And why would I want to pay somebody else when I think this is so fun to do it myself? And I get just the amount that I want. Look at that. Look at the comparison. Isn't that gorgeous? Okay, so we're going to do the same thing again. I'm not going to get the leaves completely wet. I'm just going to mist once or twice right along that edge, and that is enough. And I think this time I'm going to do more of the brownie red and see how that looks. Kind of the burnt red, a russet color. See this line here? I think that's a little bit too solid. So I'm going to spray it and then dab it just a bit to have it kind of run. There. And I think I want a little bit more up in there.
Aren't those pretty? Look at that. Oh, it's gorgeous. As a reminder, the leaf in the upper right is the original. Can you believe the difference just a little watercolor can do for them? I love them, and I hope you do too. Thank you so much for joining me today, and I look forward to seeing you back again real soon.